Molly. Perhaps the common denominator at party scenes across Jamaica today. Users say entertain, but officials warn that when it enters, it taints. The National Council on Drug Abuse calls it a worrying trend for Jamaican youth, but the youth in question say why worry? <laughs> Molly, as they see it and believe it to be, is an escape. They say it piques an interest, fills an abyss of longing, quenches the thirst of curiosity. But does it really? This is Molly predicament. We begin with the experience of a 24-year-old man who, despite the warnings of officials, continues to use the drug that is known to alter mood and perception. I was first introduced to ecstasy, slash Molly, about maybe a, a year or two ago. That's when I first started. The reason that really compelled me to try it is not really say compelled. It was more of curiosity. I was more curious of what the reaction was like. You know, I just wanted to feel the high that I've always seen on TV. I, I don't regret trying, trying it, obviously, I'm sorry. I still love doing ecstasy. It's like the best feeling ever. A year or two ago, he says of his relationship with the drug, a bit of uncertainty. But what he knows for sure is that it won't end anytime soon. Um, the lucky that I have for it would be the high that it gives. It doesn't really give you a bad after feeling once it's, what should I say, once I no longer feel it. Unlike weed and them thing there, it leaves a bad smell on your breath or liquor. It makes you hungover. Ecstasy doesn't do any of that. Maybe it makes you a little tired, but yeah. I was put onto it by a friend. <laughs> I won't say the name, but yeah. They were trying it and they gave me peace to try. And I said, what the heck, I always wanted to. My reaction the first time, to be honest, I was... I couldn't move, my limbs were numb, but it felt so good at the same time. It just gave me a high that I loved, and I couldn't get over it, so... The first time I only took one, and it depends on your mood. Sometimes it makes you happy, sad, it heightens the mood that you're feeling, or horny, because most people take it to get horny or whatever. And yeah, I was terrified about it, honestly, because I did it with my friend and his friend, and I was scared what would happen after, but nothing happened, thank God. I was. They only took care of me the whole night because the whole night I, I really just sang and laid on the floor high as hell. It's really sometimes takes like eight hours, six to eight hours or maybe less for the feeling to go away or for the feeling to last. But what happened the following day? The day after my first encounter, uh, I felt I felt like I wanted to try it again. <laughs> Honestly, I wanted that feeling again because it was a different feeling. You understand? Alright, so it took me like a month after to try it again because it was kind of hard to get those in those times. I didn't really ex um, experience any hallucinations or blackouts or burnouts. It was just mainly a lot of things just kept crossing my mind. So a lot of thoughts were just, it was a thought, a thought, a thought. I was just thinking a lot about, about a lot of stuff. It makes you talk a lot though. Dr. Ahmed Solomon Hegasi, a clinical cardiologist at the Heart Institute of the Caribbean, explains that repeated use of molly or any other illegal drug can cause serious heart issues. Dr. Solomon, who is board certified in cardiovascular medicine, says the use of molly particularly is deeply worrying. Repeated use of illegal drugs can carry a very high risk on the car cardiovascular uh, system. Uh, there are two types of uh, illegal drugs, like um, some are inhibitory or like causing um, some inhibition of the vital functions of the body and others are stimulatory. Uh, stimulatory means that it stimulates the, the uh, cardiovascular system and it starts to make the uh, like the uh, addict or the one who's ingesting the, those kind of uh, illegal drugs to feel like powerful and uh, euphoric and so on. But this carries a risk of developing some cardiovascular problems and heart problems like severe hypertension, arrhythmias, which are, are the irregular heart rhythm or uh, fast or slow heart rhythm. And uh, sometimes it can lead to heart attacks. So those are very, very serious complications of using illegal drugs. One of the earliest signs being an elevated blood pressure. 
the illegal, as we mentioned, the st stimulation, it means that it releases kind of catecholamines or uh, something that uh, can induce vasoconstriction of the blood vessels and this can lead to sometimes emergencies like hypertensive emergencies or urgencies and this requires immediate admission to the hospital and to be uh, put on some uh, IV medications to drop the pressure down. But the youngster continues to source the pills for $2,000 and has done so repeatedly and stealthily. No one at home knows. I have not told any of my family, my friends though, yeah, because I'm the one that put them onto this feeling. Um, how frequently I use it these days? All right, I use it like weekly now. It was usually monthly, but now it's weekly because every weekend after work, we want to get that high. We want to get over the um, depression that we feel at work. So we just take it together, sit and talk and laugh. I mean, sometimes other stuff, yeah. Sourcing it is very easy because you can go almost any and everywhere right now these days and just say the word and somebody has a link to it or somebody has it. Because, yeah, it's that easy now. Um, I have done molly with, while drinking and smoking. That <clears throat> drinking and smoking with it at the same time, it just gives you a more relaxed high to me. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions, yes, and a lot of stigma about it because people usually use it for the wrong reason. But it's more of a recreational drug for me just to have fun or to get uh, just to chill with my friends or just to talk because sometimes it makes you talk about your feelings or deep things you don't really want to talk about and yeah i think you can control your use of the drug um it can get very addictive as well if you kind of get obsessed with the feeling of getting high like me right now that's why kavar bennett registered pharmacist at parkview pharmacy in mandeville and secretary of the pharmaceutical society of jamaica is moved moved because he says youngsters are running blindfolded in a race with molly running just to lose whenever you take molly or any other amphetamines or on any other stimulated drugs they work on the central nervous systems and cause an increase in brain activity so therefore you tend to feel more focused more concentrated it also gives you a euphoric feeling molly is a molecule it is three four methylene dioxy menamphetamine and it's a pure crystalline powder it is normally made in the laboratory and of course it had stimulated effects that is what researchers have found what i have seen and researched is that some of the molly tablets may known to contain dextrometorphan is a drug which is present in cough mixtures now persons tend to extract the pure crystalline form of dexamethorphan or to sniff the powder and that can cause them to feel as how well, having blurred vision, a sense of euphoric feeling as well. So these persons that um, take the dexamethorphan um, drug, they can have an out-of-body sensation feeling as well because of the, the effects of the drug, right? Not only that, but one of the dangerous or negative effects of dexamethorphan, if it is um, illicitly used, it can cause its hyperthermia. Heat in the atmosphere, serious effects on them because that can even cause them to, um, to have brain damage or coma, understand, and, or even seizure. But what is the distribution like? Ramard Alliance tracked down one man who sells the drug to people who reach out via Instagram and spoke with him. From boasting a more female-based clientele to revealing that he has been using the drug for almost 10 years now, the man says Molly is like the starter pack for parties today. If we have a chronic, if we know it's part of the party, then the people in Molly say it's part of the party, then the, yeah, I say mostly the ice demand that we there. <coughs> so somebody has say, you know, so we are going to so tomorrow. You know, say 40 people, yes, I go want it, or 50 say, or they say it mostly. So, how much do you go for? Then go between two, five to three. For one pill? Yeah. So, how many stores them? Majority, I, I oversee the come from, you know, make it so. But then bring it in, you know, know how. Yeah, but we have a source, so we get it from this way. Never know, say, we got enough. But men act like it, it is not illegal. So even if me they put a video and show it, nobody can. I 
I saw that you posted a video with a girl who you say is a client, you know, who was crying and telling people not to take Molly. What is the reaction I usually get from people who you sell the pill to? We get all different reactions. Some say, some say, um, make them feel like they're all dead. Some say, it bring out all of them, them emotion, they're hungry. Some say, make them breathe like, you know, some people with, with lack of confidence. I'm full of fear, they say that why they're not no fear when they take fun when they take it, they're not no fear and feel like and they want to fire her. This is from Wednesday to Friday. If you if you really want to go like overdo it, you can say like 500. If you don't really want to overdo it, you can go to one party and just be a party and sell out 150. Because one somebody sometimes buy a three, four, five, stay there. It's a thing, you know, so you take it, you tell it so you can take more, but you have to know your limit. Me you know my limit, because I know what you can do to me, you know. But if somebody comes to me and say, I'm going to have four minutes, turn it down, down. Professor Ive Law Lloyd Griffith, a long-standing expert on Caribbean security, crime and drugs, says the Mali issue must be attacked swiftly and the source of the drug should be clipped. I think it's important to keep two things in mind that Jamaica does not produce ecstasy. Yes, Jamaica produces ganja, but the core component of ecstasy, the core component of Mali comes from outside of Jamaica. And therefore, a certain set of officials that must be involved in fighting this new dimension of the scourge has to be people battling the trafficking. Jamaica Defense Force, Jamaica Coast Guard, Jamaica uh, Constabulary Force. But I think the reality of the Mali and the STC component suggests the need for enhanced collaboration with source countries, enhanced collaboration with the United States, enhanced collaboration with Colombia, enhanced collaboration with other South American countries. So fighting the Mali challenge is not something amenable only to Jamaica inside Jamaicans. It's gotta be a collaborative effort by people who can control, the, 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 limit the inflow of the ecstasy. Now we hear from a 26 year old woman who quit after a few months with Mali. The good, she said, was eclipsed by the displeasure of the drug. It didn't go on for long. I think when I realized the the side effects, the, the grinding of my teeth um, and the nausea, I didn't want that. I didn't like it. I don't like, I like my teeth <laughs> and the grinding just, no, I didn't like that. I didn't like the side effects and I didn't like I did I didn't like that I didn't have control of my body as in um especially with the, the grind of the teeth and the headaches and so on. And I realized that this was just something that I was being to myself and the side effects for me lasted way too long. Um so the lows were too low for me. So I stopped. Um, I didn't 
didn't have any withdrawals. I didn't have anything like that. I still um, hung out with the friends. Um, so even when they were taking it, I didn't. Um, so no, I didn't have any withdrawals or anything like that. I think for me, I just hated the side effects so much that that propelled me to not take it anymore. She explains that each time the drug wore off, she would become increasingly uneasy. It, it doesn't make you feel hungry. So the next day I would have nausea, as in you want to throw away can't throw because you didn't eat. Um, so I would have bouts of nausea and headache and this would, for me this happened, like this would continue for at least two, three days, sometimes four. I, I, I don't like feeling nauseous. Um, so that was my experience. But considering the notoriety of the drug, Dr. Keisha Bowler-Hines, associate clinical psychologist, argues that coping mechanisms have to be taught at home in the impressionable years so youngsters don't turn to alternative coping methods when things get tough. Where our children are concerned, one of the greatest ways to teach our children how to cope with difficult situations is by modeling. If their parents or caregivers or church family or teachers were to demonstrate how to manage difficult circumstances, then our children are able to learn and they are then able to mimic similar responses as they get older. Take for example, Let's look at something like losing someone that you love to death, someone dies. Sometimes adults might shy away from having a child see them cry, or they may feel uncomfortable expressing their sadness and their grief in the presence of a child. But if the child is able to see mommy or daddy or their caregiver or their sister or their brother crying, that child learns that it is okay to cry when I feel sad, that it's okay for me to express how I'm feeling because those around me will understand. And she says it's equally important that people know and understand what coping mechanisms are. After all, that's the only way they can be effectively established. Coping strategies are far and wide and may differ based on the situation. So for many of us here in Jamaica, a lot of us cope with problems by our faith. We pray, we read our Bible. Many persons will tell you, oh, I, I, I just pray. And that really is, is helpful because it's faith-based. Some persons talk to other persons about their difficult situations or their challenges. So um, you may sit with a friend, you may have a close friend that you talk with, or you might have a close group of friends that you might share with. National Director of Jamaica Youth for Christ and former prison chaplain, Reverend Hera Blair Jr., has seen firsthand youngsters who get caught on the drug trap. Yes, um, when I was a prison chaplain in the Cayman Islands and also when I was here, when I came here 14 years ago, I realized that drug was a very big part of the lives of youngsters. In fact, I did a survey in the prison and found that uh, there was a transference from youth to adulthood. Um, children of the juvenile system that were there for drugs continued throughout until they were in the adult system. Um, and it led me to believe that we were not focusing in the right way on bringing change in their lives. But this 24-year-old man believes he doesn't need to change. He believes it won't get to a stage where Molly lands him in prison. His first encounter with the drug, he explains, came as a result of not being able to source ecstasy. All right, so I was first introduced to Molly last year, October. Um, the reason I actually tried it, it was because we couldn't get any ecstasy. And then they said that Molly would have actually been stronger. Um, I don't regret trying it because, you know, I'm up for new experiences and this was something they said it was stronger than the ecstasy, so I said, all right, let me give it a try. I didn't actually like this because it, how would I say this now? It gave me a different feeling. Like ecstasy would have given you like a high feeling. 
the molly made me feel <clears throat> very lazy um it was really suggested to me by a friend and again my reaction was very it was very mild it wasn't like you know it was it really put me to sleep it i didn't feel any after effects to say like how ecstasy did or it was just i slept through the night and i woke up feeling rested i wasn't terrified i was very calm because i was like okay it's just a pill i'm not taking it with any like alcohol or anything just for the experience really um i there wasn't really any noticeable changes i didn't feel any different it was just i woke up feeling very normal felt rested felt like i had eight hours worth of sleep which i basically had i'm not surprised i'm alarmed um, and therefore my efforts has been to really get to the minds of parents to become more aware of what is coming home um, and also what is taking place in the lives of their children while they're on the internet um, so the, the interactions between friends the interactions between adults who they don't even know um, and, and the fact that children are no longer just at home but they're or partying late at night, they're on the road all different hours of the day, means that people have access. Uh, when I talk with um, former prisoners and ask them how did they get in the system, it was the fact that they were on the street corner and during that time, a don or somebody would ask them to go and buy something, give them money, do things. It's the same process now, where um, gangsters or dons or others are involved in interacting with these children on the road and tell them about what's available. Um, you, you can share this with your, your schoolmates, you can share this with your classmates, and get money. Um, I remember a principal called me to a school saying that um, the children were selling ganja cake, um, and that it was indeed affecting some of them. Yet we continue to say that there's no effect on the lives of these youngsters by simple things like weed um, and other things that are more dangerous that are out there and definitely impacting our youngsters. It can be quite difficult in the absence of a strong support network. I cannot emphasize that enough. Sometimes when our children make decisions that we don't like as parents or as caregivers, we become quite angry and sometimes we blame ourselves. Sometimes we also lash out at the child themselves. One way that could really be helpful is to be more supportive, is to be present with that child or with that teenager or adolescent and journey with them through the process. It means pulling out all the stops. It might mean hearing their side, even if you don't agree with it, but giving them a reasonable ear, validating their feelings, trying to understand where they are coming from and help them along the way. It might mean going with them to receive counseling support. It might mean um, taking extra steps to just sit with them when they are down or sad. It might mean um, simply recognizing that perhaps some of the things that we have tried as parents may not have worked as effectively as we hoped. And maybe we need to change some of our own parenting strategies to better meet the needs of the adolescent or the teenager that we're working with. But for me, social support is so important. Of course, compliance with whatever medical regime is put on the table if, if the child or the teenager is receiving medical care. Compliance is important. Modeling the change that you want to see is also very, very important. Um, being attuned to your child's needs are important. You may notice that your child's behavior change. It's not the same as what it used to be. Pay attention to that. Don't just brush it off and leave it alone. Remember that even as our children get older, they still need us to hold their hands. They still need guidance. They still need support. So you have one children that are pregnant, Two, you have children or youngsters bringing in other things like the, the drugs and the, the, the molly to make sure that, well, you can enjoy yourself, you don't have to be bored. And you know, the thing today is that youngsters say all the time, I'm bored. 
Whereas people like me who I grew up reading, I've never been bored in my life. But, but at the end of the day, when they don't have nothing to do, here comes TikTok, here comes, here comes Facebook, here comes all these other things, and here comes the drugs. And once the drugs come, um, oftentimes with it will come sex and other things which create other issues. If not just plain sex, then rape and other issues that will affect the lives and the minds and the mentality of these youngsters. Um, my friends are aware of me taking the drug. I take it on like occasions, like hanging out really. Not every time, just really special occasions. Like if there's a big group of us and we're chilling and just relaxing and you know, sometimes at parties. Yeah, but the last time I took, I, I, I've tried the drug twice really. It's easy to source because there's always someone selling or advertising, but they advertise it in a special way, really. And it's like 2K, 2,500, depending on where you go. The last time I took the Mali, I actually had alcohol. I started drinking before I took the pill, so I think that really um, affected how it, you know, it affected my body. So it was a different feeling. For me, doing drugs, it makes me speak. It makes me a little more talkative no more interactive there has been a lot of controversy about the drug itself um to me to each your own i've done a lot i'm not going to judge anybody based on what they say for so you know i think that you should get your own opinion of it just to see how it really affects you i'm not saying it is for everyone because for some people they try the high and they just get addicted 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 um i'm not really addicted to a high i'm just addicted to a good time but i don't necessarily want to have a good time all the time it's just really once in a blue moon defense attorney queen's counsel peter champagne reminds users that molly is an illegal drug that could land them a foul of the law if someone is caught in jamaica with dangerous drugs they will face the full effect of the dangerous drugs act which prescribes a number of penalties for offenses under the legislation uh, if it is, for instance, that they are caught with these dangerous drugs at the airport, the offenses can range from dealing to possession and to taking steps to export and conspiracy to export. If they are caught in locations not designated as ports of entry or exit, then they can be charged with dealing, uh, possession as well of, of dangerous drugs, and that is a recordable conviction for persons above the age of 18. What that effect means, what it, in effect that means is that uh, persons will have a criminal record. It will affect their ability in the future to get employment where a criminal record, a clean criminal record is important. It will affect their ability to travel overseas because if you need a visa, for example, uh, you would have to disclose on the requisite form that you have a previous conviction. And even if you don't, there are means and ways of checking. If you want to become a member of the security forces, again, it would be a bar to such an application in the way of success. So the implications are very serious. You may be convicted and you may not go to prison. You may get a suspended sentence, but that is not it alone, because in future, when you are looking to broaden your horizons, whether in terms of employment, traveling, or specific um, discipline in the way of, for instance, law. Um, these are things that will present themselves as an impediment to your advancement. But it's not only the youngsters using the drug who face the possibility. Champagne points to the legal dilemma parents may find themselves in if their underage children are caught with any illegal drug. On the, the Child Care and Protection Act, I believe it's Section 9, uh, parents or guardians can be charged for willful neglect of children. So if it is that the circumstances are of such where the police is of the view that it was as a result of sheer neglect why the child is under these circumstances, then the parent or guardian can be charged. In relation to the child himself or herself, uh, Underage, they'll go to the family court, the children's court. They will be there. It, can, it is very inconvenient. It is embarrassing um, in terms of the whole 
process, not in terms of the treatment necessarily, but just the experience is not a pleasant one. Nobody wants to be in court, whether you're a child or an adult. It's, on, it's not a comfortable situation. And in those circumstances, you can, you run the risk of being sent to a reform institution or you may um, be put on probation. Mind you, these would not be recordable conviction, but certainly in the way of full disclosure when you're applying to go to the university overseas or elsewhere, the question may be, have you ever been charged for anything? And if you are true to your um, position, then this may be, again, an impediment in terms of your advancement in the way of education. Mali specifically is a very, uh, we would say, like a dangerous drug, okay? Because it's a form of ecstasy, uh, but a raw form of ecstasy, actually. Is, uh, it's, it can lead to some severe consequences on the heart and the brain. So yes, definitely, uh, anybody is, is vulnerable for that. The problem with Molly, especially that it's, uh, um, uh, it can induce some kind of stimulatory effect on the brain and causes like hallucination, uh, seizures, uh, hyperthermia, and sometimes it can cause severe hypertension and it can cause severe chest pain, tightness, palpitations, and can lead to serious consequences, as we mentioned before. DJ Lizards, a local disc jockey, has placed some blame on dancehall music, saying that in recent years, the genre has drifted away from uprightness and integrity. And so he urges artists to use their platforms wisely. To me, how I feel about the state of dancehall currently in 2022, I mean, it's a, it has lost a lot of its morals and original roots, you know what I mean? Um, the new artists that are breaking on the scene, singing about, you know, drugs and glorifying guns and killing and all these things. Um, as you know, like, if they want the song to play on the radio, like, <laughs> a this jockey like me, you know, I'm not going to be able to play your song, you know what I mean? So at the same time, it hinders a lot of things for the artist himself. And um, music is influence, and I can tell you that. So, whatever you put out there, you know, it spreads out in the atmosphere, and it creates an impact. So, right now, the state that it is in right now, trust me, uh, many of the youths they don't have a mind of their own, and um, they are easily influenced. So, and these artists, you know, for example, like a skeng, you understand? or Joshi or, you know what I mean, even Romain Virgo, Christopher Martin, these are idols, you know what I mean, for the younger generation coming up, even if you don't want to be an artist, you know, you just like the artist, vibe, like him style, him have a pretty car, pretty house, you know what I mean, but at the same time, as I said, the state right now that it is in, for most of the music that is coming out, glorifying the guns and the drugs, it's a deplorable state for dance music you know what i mean definitely in general because as i rewind back the skit as a disc jockey you know on my um the radio station that i work on we're not gonna play those types of songs you understand because as i said music is influence and the youths nowadays their minds are not very strong some of them not even want to listen to their own parents right now you know what i mean they have easy access to music you know what I mean? So, whatever they are seeping in, that is what is going to saturate in their minds and their souls. It's not like the generation in the 90s and the 80s where you are not going to just hear something and act on it. But we are living in a different era, different um, generation, and these younger spirits, younger souls are very rebellious. You know what I mean? So, artists, please, may I ask you, you know what I mean? I can't tell you what to sing, but obviously, you know that music is an influence. I think it's also important to say that battling drugs, whether it's ganja, battling drugs, whether it's ecstasy or methamphetamines, is not amenable only to the police doing something about it. Civic organizations have got to be involved. Families have got to be involved. Schools have got to be involved. And by virtue of the nature of the beast, the beast is not amenable to a quick fix. And so the reality is that this is going to take a while before it can be attenuated. 
the society as a whole has got to be prepared to be engaged collectively rather than looking just at the police force or the defense force or the criminal justice architecture as a whole to solve the problem. This is, uh, this is another part of the th thing. Definitely we saw many patients with like arrhythmias, uh, which is um, like a disturbance in the heart rhythm and severe hypertension. But the most serious complications, especially for the injectable illegal drugs, that it can cause something called infective endocarditis, which is a kind of infection of the heart valves, especially tricuspid valve, and it destroys the, the valve completely. And uh, many of them we couldn't save, and they died out of that because they need a, sometimes a major surgery to, uh, to take off, uh, out the infection and to replace the valve, and sometimes they can make it, sometimes not, especially that it's it's a a, a very expensive like um, a procedure. So if they are not able to do it in, on time, this end uh, end up in a very sad way. I will say this: Do not engage in it. Firstly, as I understand it, the use of drugs have different effects on different people. Some, it causes an addiction that spirals into other types of um, use of drugs, more hard, hard drugs, as they would want to say. It doesn't end good at all. So it is not a road that you would want to embark on. Don't do it. Look towards your future. Do not do drugs. Have you considered what this is doing to your body? Have you considered what the health impact and health effects are likely to be? Do you want to be a person who has a full and long life into your 50s and 60s and 70s? And consider taking a minute to understand what the impact of this drug is on your human anatomy. Leave for a moment what high you may get from it. But think of yourself as a young person who would like to grow old and be productive in society. This drug is not gonna help you. Many voices, praise and condemnation. This has been Molly Predicament by Jamaica Observer.